Guru Nation's short and sweet video, I actually met a bunch of interesting people on Clubhouse today. We have a Guru Nation Clubhouse Club. So first thing, you got to make sure you have an iPhone or iPad or something that you can get on Clubhouse. Um, if you need an invite, there's people out there that have it. Only iOS devices. Then you need to find myself. It's Dan Sfera. And then you find my club, Guru Nation. Well, we have weekly meetings and we're going to be rolling out even more meetings on Clubhouse uh, as it starts to get more popular. But I met three interesting people uh, last Friday on Clubhouse and their questions were uh, related. Two were PhD uh, educated people who were having a hard time getting into the industry. And another was an international medical graduate who also was wanting to get into the industry. The common theme I noticed, and I have nothing against academic medical centers uh, or institutions. The, the, the common theme I see is that that's the first place these people tend to go. They tend to gravitate towards AMCs. And that's probably the last place that you should go if you're looking to get started quickly and exponentially growing your career quickly. So let me tell you what I suggested for these people. Uh, for both the PhD and the international medical graduate, there are private research clinics in your area that do all kinds of studies that sometimes require advanced degrees for their staff, for some of their staff to do certain assessments. For example, PhD, if you look at just about every single psychiatric clinical trial, they are always requiring what's called psychometric raters to do the rating assessment. Some of these assessments are, and they're all based on, and they vary based on the therapeutic indication. So if it's schizophrenia, you're going to see a lot of PANS, which is positive and negative symptom of schizophrenia. You're going to see CGI, clinical global improvement. You're going to see for bipolar, the Weimar's Young Mania rating scale uh, for Alzheimer's. You're going to see ADAS-COG, different things like this. You, If you actually want to see what these things are, just go on uh, clinicaltrials.gov type in an indication like schizophrenia, Alzheimer's, something from, from central nervous system indication, and you'll look at the assessments. Every single one of those what's called rating assessments requires what's called a psychometric rater. If a site employs staff and the site wants their staff members to be raters for certain scales on a study, they have to go through a rater uh, vendor the bottom line is sites need individuals with advanced degrees. PhD is perfect. You can't get higher. That's a doctorate degree. So more often than not, this person's academic credentials is going to be more than enough to be the rater for the majority of the assessments that are needed. Now, some rater assessment scales just want an MD. So that's there's nothing you can do about that, the PI or the sub I who's an MD or DO will have to do that. But for a lot of them, I would say 80% or more, PhD is fine. Sometimes they just want master's degree too. So find small clinics in your area that do psychiatric studies. They're in every major metro city in the country. So stay away from the academic institutions and the universities. They do these same studies, but they already have their people. And you have a better chance of getting in quickly, which is what you need to gain your experience at one of these smaller sites. A, a free scale that you can get certified on right now is the Columbia Severity Suicide Rating Scale, CSSRS, CSSRS. Just Google it, CSSRS, Columbia Severity Suicide Rating Scale Certification. You can just go ahead and get that now, put that on your resume. Now, when you go to sites, you say, oh, yeah, I'm CCRS certified, and I'd be happy to get certified for any of the studies that you may need help with a psychometric rater because I have a PhD. Or in the case of the international medical graduate, I also have a doctorate degree. I just don't have a license in this country. I've had both of those individuals uh, work for me in the past at all of my clinics when we're doing psychiatric studies. So that's one of the suggestions I have for the PhD and the IMG, 
Now, interestingly enough, the IMG, which is the International Medical Graduate, you actually have more options because oftentimes a PhD is overqualified to be a coordinator, and most sites know that, uh, but not overqualified to be a rater. But an International Medical Graduate, you can do both because you're not technically overqualified, even though you have a doctorate degree. For some reason, the thought process is you're not overqualified because you are a foreign trained physician. So you're used to interacting with patients and looking at lab results and things like that, even though you're not going to be allowed to do that in at, at the clinic that you work at uh, in an official capacity, you can definitely flag lab results to your doctors quickly because you are a doctor, you are just not licensed in the States to do this. So for the IMGs, you have even more options. You can go the psychometric radar assessment route, but you can also go the study coordinator route at small sites near you. If you happen to come across an opportunity at academic medical center, take it. I'm not against academic medical centers. I just think the best bang for your buck, and in this case, your buck me, uh, being your time and effort is spent at smaller sites near you. And again, apply to a lot. Don't just go to one and then get discouraged when they say they don't need help. Try 10, try 15, try 20, and then go from there. And these days, a lot of sites are hiring virtual raters too with COVID and all that. So you may not even be restricted uh, geographically anymore. So that's plenty of opportunities right there. Try to avoid the AMC route, go the private site route. Small is the new big in 2021. Good luck. Let me know how it goes.